Shall we play a game? Hello and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. In this video, I am going to hopefully do a quick engine swap, as one may say. Basically, I'm going to remove the main unit from both of these UFO Master Blaster stations and solder it back into the other. The main reason is this one here does not work, and the VFD has a burnout, which you can't really see from here, but I'll show you later. And that in itself isn't necessarily the reason for it not to work, but since I have a working one that's right over here, I wanted to just do a quick swap. Now I did check the capacitors visually and with the multimeter as well as the resistors in this one so I think it's more internal than what you see on the board. And I did buy this as a non-working one for dirt cheap knowing that it wasn't going to work but as you can see it looks like brand new compared to this one. I think you could tell by the video here. This is like pure white and this has got a little bit of yellow tint to it which is obviously due to probably the basic elements of oxygen, heat, and UV rays. Oh, and by the way, as you can tell, I got the box included too. That came with, I think it was with this one. So, this is pretty cool. I'll get into the game in a little bit, but first let me just show you the solder points of this one. What the work's going to be involved. So, let's pop this open here. This one here, I really want to keep as much as I can, but unfortunately, this is all one piece. So, what I will be doing on this board, I'm going to just desolder this, this one as well. These are out to the battery. And also the, well, I may not actually do the speaker because I think this one's pretty decent. So. I may just keep that, but we'll see. But for sure, I am going to change out the AC connection because this one's totally perfect. The other one here is rusted, corroded. So I will take this off as well. Just a couple of wires. Actually, it will be just a one, two, and of course that one's going to be coming off anyway. So three wires. And um, yeah, that should be it. It should be pretty simple. So I, so I hope. We'll see how this is. Okay, so I have them opened up. And this is the one that I want to be in working condition. I do need to clean up a little bit. But this has got the great um, white color shell. And it just doesn't work. But it has a burnout. This one is the one that does work. But look at the work that they've done in there. So someone had done some work. Did not say that in the listing. But someone did some work and where it was corroded on the AC connection here. What was done instead was they just snipped it off all three wires and they kind of they didn't really cap it off but they capped it off here I guess but they didn't cap this one this was just sitting in there when I opened it up but it's the same three wires that I was going to desolder anyway so no big deal. I will desolder this from the board and I think I'm going to use their or use this one's um, speaker because it was decent. So this is another reason why it's always great to open up some of these games because you never know what someone might have done before. And I'm glad I did because this is just hanging in there. Can you see me shorting this out by just touching something? I mean, <laughs> I mean it's not even clipped. It's just hanging out there. Oh well. All right. Well, let's get to this. So here's my setup. I have the nice display on the microscope, and then I also have it on the big screen here, just because, I guess because why not, right? No, but it does It does look great. You could really see the details. I'll probably end up using, I'll probably use the microscope one, I don't know. We'll see, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how cool this looks. I'll record from that and put it on the video. I gotta take the green one and the blue one off the board, and that's it because I don't need to do the orange one. So let's get rid of this green one first. All right, the green one's off. The blue one's next. And that one is, let's see, where's that blue one? There's the blue one.
And that should be it. I will get rid of this nasty solder job on this red colored one, which don't know why. Ooh, horrible. Let me just focus that in for you. Okay, so we're done with the soldering and removal. Here is the old one that had issues. So this has been taken out. I did take the speaker with it because I don't really found a difference with the old, uh, the new one. It does work. The speaker is just as good. And here is the result of the swap. So this is the one that was working. Just resoldered everything. As you can see, the pictures look pretty good. I think I did a decent job. I mean. You always have to use flux, never forget. Let's put this together and let's see if it powers up. Just a quick dusting here. I hope to not have to open this again. Same goes true for the VFD. Smudge's fingerprints are probably going to be seen. Maybe not because of the blue cover over the top. Let's just try this. Let me dim the lights a little bit. All right, moment of truth. Let's see. Yes, we got we got a display. I hear sounds. So I don't think I ever gave this a proper cleaning, even though it's very white. So I'm gonna do that really quick here, and you can see I don't really need a deep scratching one because there's really no scratches on this. So I'm just doing a surface clean. And you can see how shiny it is. And I'm not even done. I just barely buffed it out. Oh, look at that. I mean, it looks like brand new. Just looking at it here, how it's so shiny. I haven't done the back. And you can see how dull it is. Let me finish this up. And then we'll make sure it still works. And then we'll talk about the game a little bit. Okay, I got them all cleaned up. Well, no, I didn't clean up the one that's yellow, but I cleaned up the one that was white, which I never did before, so it's even whiter than it could ever be. Just wanted to show you how it looks, the difference, the contrast. I'm going to end up probably just using this as a spare, since it's got some good parts in there that could be useful, perhaps. All right, well, here it is. All cleaned up, batteries in it. I should mention that this game came out in 1979 from the company Bambino. And I do have another game from them called Safari that came out in 1981. I'll have to create a video on that one. But this company pretty much made sporting games like basketball, football, boxing, hockey, and soccer. So this UFO game and the Safari one is what got my interest. Comment below if any of you have heard or owned one of the Bambino games because I really never heard about this until recently. As I mentioned earlier, this has a VFD, which stands for Vacuum Fluorescent Display. What that means is it's basically a heavy battery drain, but the trade-off is your display is brighter than the previous technology. There is a video that I created on the Coleco 7, which some of those games use as VFDs, and you can definitely see the difference. The link to that video is on the top right, and if you haven't seen the Coleco 7 video, it's definitely a worth a watch. Now getting back to this UFO Master Blaster Station, I have to say this design also is very appealing. It looks like a spaceship or rocket. I mean, look at this. And then, you know, on the back, as you saw earlier, the battery compartments here looks like a fuselage with each having its own separate section to put the two AA uh, batteries in. It's pretty cool how it looks. Great design, very eye appealing or visual appealing. I do like that this particular game I have has the nice sticker with the instructions like a lot of games do. And it's intact, which is nice. Speaking about the manual, I did get the box, like I mentioned earlier as well. Hand-sized computer game, a couple things on here. It looks like it came from Kmart. Can't really see the price. The world's smallest graphic display with revolutionary computer game functions. So, 1979. Um, actually, it says 78 for the copyright, but I think it came out in 79. Now, I don't believe I have instructions with this one. Oh, I do. I guess I should have looked. So I did get the instructions as well, which is cool. And 
It's got a little scorecard in the back, which I will explain how the scoring is. The gameplay is quite simple. The objective is you need to shoot down the descending UFOs with missiles that you can control. You control it with this little directional controller. Now you only have 80 seconds to achieve the best score possible. 99 points is the most possible and that's what you're aiming to achieve. You also have three different skill levels which you can see here. One, two, and three. Skill one is novice, two is mini blaster, and three is master blaster. The difference in the skills is the speed of the game. You should start on skill one it says and then you move up as you meet each of the levels challenge which is getting 99 points. Now what makes this game cool compared to other games that you shoot at is when you launch a missile by pressing this orange button here to fire you can still control it while it's in flight and like I mentioned this directional control you can go left or right so while it's in flight you can actually maneuver it to hit the UFOs that are descending upon you. Now if one of those UFOs hits your launching pad which is at the bottom here it ends the game. Now it might sound easy but with the time factor and then again trying to avoid the UFOs from hitting your launching pad that's coming down there's also multi UFOs that may come down at once it really makes it for a skilled game where you need to make every launch of that missile count. Now scoring does vary as well. The higher, which would be up here because they come down, the higher you get a uh, UFO, the more points you can achieve. You can get anywhere from 6 points all the way down to 0 if you get them at the lowest level. And when the game is over, it, the score will be shown. And then to reset, it's just an on and off switch. You go back to off, turn it back on. In the instructions, I thought this was interesting right over here. It says UFOs attack from a variety of over 100 million computerized courses. Well, I'm not going to do the math with the probability, so I'll just take their word on this. So let's try round one and see where we go. I'm going to zoom in and change the speed of the recording so you don't get any flicker. All right, let's see what I can do. I'm gonna do it on skill one, and when you turn this thing on, it will start immediately, so you need to be ready. Doesn't give you a warning, and there it goes. That's me firing missiles right off, right away. You see, I got three points. That one's five. That was six. There we go. I accomplished 99 points in less than 80 seconds. And as you can probably tell, my technique was I just kept firing away because why not? You don't have a limit number of missiles you can launch. So I just took the chance of firing it right off the bat. And if I get off the top by luck, that's six points. And that just helps me get closer to 99. So you can't rapid fire by shooting more than one missile at a time on a display. So once you shoot one, you got to wait till either it misses or hits, and then you can do the next one. But still, that works. And I don't know how much time it took me to get that. Let's do one quick round of level three just to show you the speed difference. So I'll put three, power it off because that's how you reset the game, and power it back on, and let's see how quick this goes. You can see it's rapid. You really need to, and I guess the biggest fear I have is hitting, or getting hit by a UFO, which will end the game. Well, that was worth that much. <laughs> yep, it hit the launching pad, so at the end of the game, score 24. Pretty much it. I mean, the game is great. I think it's an awesome game. I like the concept. I like the way it looks. And it's one of those games that it's got a quick round, I guess you can call it, or play time. I really don't like those games that take, you know, maybe, I wouldn't say half an hour, but maybe takes over five minutes to at least wait for the next person's turn. This is, what, 80 seconds or less? And it's pretty cool objective. 
There is skill involved, as you could tell. I give this a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. And again, if you owned this before, maybe something else by Bambino. Just really curious to hear. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again for watching. And until next time, keep that gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.